You ask for it. Yes, you ask for it. Television's greatest all-time request show. Brought to you by Skippy, America's largest selling peanut butter. If you like peanuts, you like Skippy. You ask for it. With your genie with the light white hair, Art Baker. To the frozen north here. Very busy and frosty workshop here. If such a toy maker really exists, can I see him on your Christmas show? Sincerely, Mrs. Estelle Winkler. Well, Mrs. Winkler, he does exist. And I'll bet you anything, he's hard at work right now in this very busy workshop. He's known as Treyborn. And his lightning fast skill, believe me, comes in handy filling last minute orders. You'll find him in this shop. I'm almost. Uh-huh. All right, you asked for it. Let's go and meet him. Yeah. I was right, Trevor. Hard at work. You heard the commands of Mrs. Winkler, did you? I yes, asked Mr. Baker. Some balloon toys in a hurry. In a hurry. May I watch you? Certainly. Sit right down. Good. First, Mrs. Winkler, a dash hound or a weenie dog. I want you to guess what this one is. Golly, that's wonderful. Congratulations to you. A little dog soon and a squirrel and that marvelous giraffe down. In less than three minutes, I was timing you. I can see why Santa Claus finds you handy filling in rush orders at the end. Thank you very much. Mrs. Winkler, we're all glad that you asked for it. Hey, how 
Howdy, fellas. How you doing? Are you in a good humor? I hope you are, because I tell you, we've got some singing to do here, and, uh, well, I want you in a good humor, and your pipes all lined up here, and gather around a little bit in a huddle, will you? And I want to ask you, you wrote, Dear Art, I am a Marine, and last Christmas, I was in the San Diego Naval Hospital, recovering from wounds received in Korea. In one ward, a group of leathernecks, some walking and some on crutches and some in wheelchairs, came around and sang Christmas carols. Now, they were not professional singers at all, but to me, it beat any great oratorio I ever heard in my life. It made my Christmas kind of sacred. That's what I ask for, a dozen or so Marines, guys who can fight one minute and come up singing the next. Signed, Henry Nevers. Well, Henry, tell you what we did. We went down to the great Marine base there in Camp Pendleton, and we invited these boys up here to answer your request. Say, who knows? You might recognize some of these faces. They might have been in that hospital with you on Christmas a year ago, or they might have been on the Korean battlefield. They just returned from there. Like you, they were there. Bill, when did you get over to Korea? September 1950, Art. 1950. That seems ages ago, doesn't it? When were you wounded then, Bill? November of the same year. <laughs> two, uh, two months you were there, hmm? Yes, sir. And uh, last Christmas, uh, how were you, hmm? I didn't feel much like singing. I guess so. But you're coming along well now, and uh, isn't it great to be home on Christmas? It sure is, Art. Well, fellas, we're awful glad to have you here. And I tell you, Mr. Nevers back there, in fact, everybody, why don't you just come and join in while we sing you some good old-fashioned Christmas carols? You know, uh, I used to sing in the First World War, fellas. Can I join in? Sure. Well, uh, let's take It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. Ready? It came upon the midnight clear that glorious sound of all to angels standing near the earth to touch their hearts of gold. Peace on the earth, goodwill to men from hands of gracious King. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Very successful. I know what I'd like. The first Noel, huh? You're better singers than you said. Let's try Silent Night. Silent Night. Oh. Finale, O come all ye faithful.
well as I was swell. I know what this letter writer meant. It made his Christmas uh, a little more sacred. And I tell you, through you, Henry Nevers, back in Chicago, you made us all feel the same way. Because you asked for it. Thomas P. Dillon, Ludwig Donat. Two of Hollywood's most noted character actors, my friends. And they are here to recreate a very famous scene from one of America's all-time Broadway hits. Do you remember A.B.'s Irish Rose? You bet I do. It was back in the Roaring Twenties. And for old time's sake, how about giving us a scene from that again? Robert Merrill. Well, Mr. Merrill, because you asked for it, yes. These two actors are going to portray the famous fathers. And now for you, Mr. Merrill, they are going to enact that famous Christmas scene, Mr. Merrill. I am... Solomon Levy. And I'm Patrick Murphy. Get, Get along. On. My daughter Rosemary has married my son A.B. And because they got married, he doesn't speak to them. And I don't speak to them. In fact, In fact we, we don't, don't speak, speak to, to each other. <laughs> <laughs> that, my friends, is how it was with the Levies and the Murphys. Well, one whole year passes. And the fathers learned that uh, Rosemary had a baby. And unbeknownst to each other, each of them decided to plan to visit A.B. and Rosemary. And this is what happened. What are you trying to do, you old goat? Wake up the baby? Well, listen to him. It's my son's baby, isn't it? I have as much right to be here as you have. Well, that's what you think. Aye, that's what I think. I came here to see me granddaughter and... <laughs> Look at him. He knows already it's a daughter. It's a girl. <laughs> do you know what it is? <laughs> no, but I know it's not a girl. Then if it's a boy, they must have named the master me. Patrick. Hey, Patrick. What a name. Patrick Murphy. Patrick's a name that speaks for itself. Sure, but it doesn't say anything. Ah, why don't you drop dead? Thank you. The same to you. One more word like that out of you come, and I... Come, 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 gentlemen. If you're going to fight like that, it's better if you'd stayed away. What? Me stay away from me daughter and me grandchild at Christmas? Not me, daughter. Oh, she ain't your daughter anymore. You disowned her. You said so, didn't you? Instead of making the best of a bad situation, you two are only making it worse. Now, A.B. and Rosie are... You mean Rosemary. Rosie. Very well. A.B. and his wife. Rosemary and her husband. No, he means Rosie and Abe Murray. Oh, shut up. Don't tell me to shut up. Quiet, you. A.P.A., you. Don't you call me an A.P.A. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Solomon, why, why do you call him an A.P.A.? I don't know. It makes him mad. 
Say it again. I dare you. Well, go ahead, say it. I'm not a thing. <laughs> I didn't figure you would. I don't have to say it. You're what? I think it. Oh, you'll think it, will no, you? No, 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 I'm not thinking it now. Uh, it's a good thing. But I have a very active mind. Think of the weather like that. Why, well, you're spalping your... What? You what? You... No, 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 stop. Grown men, fathers, grandfathers. Now sit down there, both of you, and behave yourselves. I'll go bring the baby. Doctor, what's the name of the baby? Patrick Joseph. Patrick Joseph. Glory be to God. Patrick Joseph. Such a name should be in my family. I think I'll call him Pat for short. I'm not going to call him Pat. I call him Mr. Levy. Well, here you are, Mr. Merton. Hello, Pat. <laughs> Pat. <laughs> Patrick Joseph Murphy Levy. Oh, I won't say the rest. Solomon. Oh, what's the use? Solomon. Twinsies. <laughs> Twinsies. Close. Ah. My Evie's a smart boy. <laughs> he, he wouldn't forget his old papa. Uh, tell me, Doctor, is, is this one called after me? Uh, well, no, Solomon. I, I'm afraid not. You see, this one's a girl. Take it. I don't want it. Oh, yes, you do. Come on, Solomon, look at it. No, I, I wouldn't do it. Poor little Rebecca. Rebecca? That was my wife's name, Oliver Shulman. Give me the baby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh, you know, I have to give Abby credit. This lad here is the spitting image of him. Wait, no, really? Yeah, look. Well, I'm a son of a gun. Didn't I tell you? <laughs> the same with the girl. She's just like Rosie. What is it? Look at her. Wait. <laughs> Would you mind if I, if I held Re Rebecca for a minute? Oh, no, not at all. Well, give me a little Patrick. Oh, wait. Careful. Huh? Ah, ah, sure. sure, I feel more natural with the girl. <laughs> well, the same with me. Yes, I feel I'm more used to it. I feel more natural with the boy. Hello. Hello, little Patrick. -el. You know, Sol. Yes, Pat. I think we've been a couple of old fools. What are you talking about? Not that old. Pat, I think we should apologize to our children. Sal, I'm... I'm ashamed of myself. I feel like ten cents worth of liverwurst. Listen. Listen to the Christmas bell. Beautiful, isn't it? Peace on earth. Goodwill to men. Ah, goodwill to men. That's what we all need in this world, Pat. Love and respect. I read a poem once. It was so true. If all the world could be governed by the heart instead of the rod, then could we finally have peace on earth and walk in the footsteps of God. Merry Christmas, Saul. Good yonder, Pat. Merry Christmas. That was a special adaptation of a beautiful Christmas scene from Abe's Irish Rose. We're very grateful indeed to these two great actors, Ludwig Donath and uh, Thomas Dillon. And also to Polly Bear, who played the doctor. And to Ann Nichols, the author, 
We're very glad that she permitted us to introduce these two lovable characters to the nation's television audience. And to you, Mr. Robert Merrill, you sure gave us all a lot of wonderful memories because you asked for it. <laughs> from California. This Christmas card has a very special greeting for a number of families back east who asked for it. They were among the first to request to see some of their relatives and loved ones who live out here in the West on this holiday season. All right, here are the Greenbergs right here. There's Millie and Jeff and Bob. And they're sending sincere greetings to Mr. and Mrs. Jack Frankel back in Detroit, Michigan. These are the Zaides. There's Martha and John and their charming little daughters, Juanita and Janetta. And they see a, say a great big daughter and family, Jean Nemechek, in Fort Do And next, the Jurski family. There's Jimmy and Pat and Jenny and Stanley. They're saying the very best of everything to the Nowaks and the Jurskis back in Toledo, Ohio. Over yonder, picking oranges there, are the Katsovalas. There is Ted and Jane and Dorian. And they are sending bushels of love and kisses to mother and dad back in Youngstown, Ohio. Yes, my friends, these folks out west here are posing for the largest Christmas card that was ever seen on television. And look, say, why don't you folks there say back there to the east all your loved ones, Merry and Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. What I say to everyone, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs>